They don't give a fuck about money, they don't give a fuck about poor people, they don't give a fuck about queer people, they just want to show off their pussies. I don't give a fuck. You don't fucking know what a lesbian is. You don't fucking know what a fucking lesbian is. I bet your lady dick knows, right? Hey everyone, so the clip that you just saw, um... It's from an encounter that myself and a group of other women experienced at the International Women's Day March in Melbourne this year, um, where we experienced some harassment by transgender activists um, and members of uh, the pro-prostitution lobby in Australia, Scarlet Alliance. Um, the full clips have been circulating online, but they've all been mass reported and taken down, so... I just felt the need to make this video to document the harassment that's been occurring, the harassment that occurred at this march, um, and to just inform the general public about what's going on um, in terms of how radical feminist right to free speech and right to peacefully demonstrate is being suppressed by this certain sect of the left. Now, because I am making this video for a general audience um, who might be who might not be familiar with the ideological differences between us and this sect of the left, um, so I will just briefly explain. So the language I'll be using to describe um, the two different groups are trans activists and radical feminists, and the basic difference is we as radical feminists um, believe there is such thing as biological sex, we believe that female and male are real categories that materially exist, and we believe that the oppression of women is based on our physical experience of being female. The other major ideological difference between the two groups is on the issue of prostitution. So radical feminists believe that prostitution constitutes um, the sexual exploitation of women, whereas um, the trans activists and uh, members of pro-sex trade lobby Scarlet Alliance believe um, that prostitution is an empowering choice um, for women and that it should be fully decriminalised. While generally radical feminists support the Nordic model um, as an approach to prostitution where it's the selling of sex by women is decriminalised, um, but the pimps and the johns are criminalised. Now, don't worry if those differences are a little bit too much for you to get your head around at this stage. Um, this video is not really going to delve too much into the ideological basis of what's going on. Um, it's mostly going to focus on the issue of free speech, um, and whether or not you're a radical feminist, this affects you, so please do stay tuned. Um, so before I show you the full clips of the harassment that occurred at the International Women's Day March this year, um, I am going to talk a little bit about what occurred at the march last year. So pictured here you can see um, a group of us radical feminists at the International Women's Day March in Melbourne 2017. Um, we had signs focusing on male violence and the sex trade um, as their key issues within radical feminism and before the march even occurred we had um, trans, act trans activists and sex trade lobbyists posting in the event um, kind of warning each other and warning everyone that a contingent of hateful radical feminists are going to be making an appearance at the march and warning each other to you know stay safe and really just kind of fear mongering about this group of people who are going to attend. Um, but we went anyway, um, a group of about 30 of us attended, which um, it was a good group in terms of, you know, safety in numbers, um, because we're aware that our views are controversial to some people and we do kind of um, anticipate some of this harassment that does usually end up occurring. Um, and at this march, we were surrounded by members of the pro-sex trade lobby, Scarlet, Scarlet Alliance. And to say that they were angry that we were there would be a huge understatement because, um, Almost upon arrival, we started being surrounded by um, Scarlet Alliance members who were hastily making signs on the spot saying things like, you know, no turfs and swerfs in Melbourne, fuck off turfs, etc. Um, and they kind of just, they flocked and circled us for the whole march, um, screamed over our chance of name the problem male violence to try and change it to name the problem turfs, name the problem swerfs. Um, and then after the march, as we tried to kind of break away from the crowd, we were followed by a few um, trans and pro-prostitution activists uh, who ripped one of our signs away. So as you can see, someone's very proud of having stolen one of the evil turf signs and ripped it up in a fit of rage. Um, and also, 
um, following the march, uh, a trans activist by the name of Iris Lee wrote this article, TERF's Uprising, Trans-Exclusionary Radical Feminist Gate Gatekeeping Womanhood. And we got a special mention in the article. So Iris says, um, I'm worried about attending my first International Women's Day march. What will the public on the train think of me? My hat is emblazoned with a scribbled slogan that reads, Feminism without trans women is not feminism. Looking back, I shouldn't have ever worried about stares from TERFs on the train because there was much worse to come at the march. A contingent of sex worker and trans exclusionary feminists, in scare quotes, known as SWERFs and TERFs, have organised a contingent to pour out their bigotry at the march. So as you can see already, it's framed as um, not us going there to you know, peacefully march on International Women's Day as women and as feminists, but um, as though our presence at these marches is a direct attack on sex workers and trans women or trans people generally. Um, so for this year's march, um, prior to the march, a flyer circulated warning people how to deal with um, TERFs and SWERFs on International Women's Day. The flyer instructs people who see anyone holding transmisogynistic or whorephobic placards to tell them that their messages violently marginalise and harm sex workers, trans women and gender non-conforming people, and to ask a marshal to tell them to leave. If they refuse to move on, obscure their harmful messages with your own placard. The flyer also features instructions on what to do if you see any sex workers, trans women or gender non-conforming person being intimidated, harassed or abused. Um, which I just find really hilarious how they just keep on, you know, coming up to us and harassing us when we're just, you know, standing there peacefully protesting, not trying to provoke anyone, not really interacting with anyone, keeping to ourselves, um, yet they put out these instructions on, you know, how to keep each other safe from these violent TERFs. And when we got to the march itself, these flyers were actually physically being circulated around the crowd, um, and I believe that the circulation of these flyers played a role in um, the events that followed. So we were a much smaller group this year. There were only about um, probably like 10 to 15 of us max. Um, so it did feel, you know, slightly more vulnerable because there's safety in numbers. Um, we had a few lesbian elders with us, and actually um, the first kind of form of harassment against us was um, someone snatching a sign off of one of the lesbian elders um, and tearing it up and that's kind of when we first got a sense of what was about to come. Um, and then this photo is quite funny actually, here's one of the women from our group um, holding her grow a pair sign and in the background you can actually see possibly the very moment that the, um, the Tim, the trans woman, who harassed us, spotted us, and kind of locked onto the target, ready to come and give us some shit. Um, and that's exactly what he did. He approached us and he started um, calling us fucking violent bitches, telling us that our signs are hate speech and should be taken down. And just to give you an idea of the ridiculousness of that accusation, um, some of the things that our signs said were just, um, porn hurts women, women's safety before men's feelings, radical feminism is back, choose loving women, lesbians are lovely, ovaries before broveries, and safe streets for women. So nothing particularly hateful, um, certainly nothing that legally constitutes hate speech because um, not even sex is a protected category um, in the legislation here in Victoria. Uh, race and religion are protected by hate speech laws, but sex and um, certainly not transgender status um, are not protected, so that's a completely unfounded claim. Don't fucking call me that, you bitch. Don't fucking call me that. I will fucking call you a bitch. You're being a fucking dumb bitch. Hello, everybody. Hi. Did you ask them to remove their signs? Can you remove your signs? Shut the fuck up. I think maybe we can... Yeah, that's my fucking voice. Yeah, that's what the voice that I was born with. I sound like a man. You think you've got like, like a you little voice? You mean the words that you're saying? You don't fucking know shit, so shut up. Okay. Both of you are very nice right now. Like, we're not being nice. Let me just Your signs deserve to be burned. Your signs deserve to be burned. You are very weak people. Shut the fuck up with your bullshit violence.
Where's the violence, guys? Where's the violence? We've reached that. No, I don't think so. I don't think these views should be expressed here. I don't think it's a to come and physically try to move our signs and intimidate us. I don't think you should be having signs here that are against other people, that are invalidating other people's identity. I don't really care what you think is legal. I'm saying what's ethical. This is an ethical space. Now, while he might not care what's legal, um, I feel it's worth pointing out that we do legally have a right to peaceful assembly. This is from the Charter of Human Rights, and it states um, that it is clear that this right applies to all gatherings for a peaceful purpose, even if unpopular or distasteful. So no matter how unethical, unpopular, distasteful your views are, you have the right, the legal right, to go and demonstrate and exercise your right to free speech. You need to shut up with your transphobia. You need to shut up with your stupidity. You think it's ethical I am to come authority. and pull up fucking bitches on International Women's Day? You think that's ethical? Yeah, because you're being a fucking violent bitch. And you need to stop thinking that your body is more valid than other people's. You need to shut up with your bullshit. You sound like a man, I'm sorry. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck if you think I'm being aggressive. I don't give a fuck if you think I'm being aggressive. You're encroaching on my shit. Wait, you so when, stood up right next to me. That's when you happens. come and approach on my shit so everybody, and fucking hold out signs like this. On International Women's Day, you come up to a bunch of actual women. You as a man. I'm a fucking woman. I'm a fucking woman. Don't you fucking call me not a woman. Don't you fucking shove that camera in my face and try to invalidate me. How can you fucking I do invalidate that? you? If you're because so you just sure, said that I wasn't a if woman. you're so sure of your identity, how can I invalidate it? Oh, shut the fuck up. Can I, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Um, I completely understand if you do want to stand here. Yeah. And I want to support your decision. Thank you. But do you think maybe, given that you're a bit it would be good to come and stand with us over here? Um, I just don't want these signs to be held up anymore. I think that like someone has to it's not up to, you. to be gone. It's around. international I understand women's that I'm being day. aggressive. So I'm a woman, and you shouldn't no, no, no. be invalidating how? me. How? How? What makes you a woman? Would you mind just giving us someone who doesn't I don't need to. Is not a woman. Of course not, because they're born as female. Who's had a hysterectomy? This is some bullshit science. Shut up. What are your chromosomes? Shut the fuck up. I don't stand with males. I don't stand with males. I don't give a fuck. That's where, why your feminism is fucking stupid. Yeah, because it doesn't prioritize it? One, you're calling me a male. One, you're saying that you don't stand with males. I don't give a fuck. Like you're not gonna achieve Shut the fuck up. Honestly. Oh, I'm not having conversations, conversations with you. I am disrupting you. I am disrupting you. I'm not having a conversation with you. He came into our space. So he should be the one who is I get it. He came and harassed us. Physically harassed us. Yes, I have it on camera. I have it on camera. The resolution is the signs being ripped apart. Well, then they should be asked to leave. She's getting so hopefully by now you're getting a little bit of a picture of the craziness that we've been encountering um, when we attend these marches. But as crazy as that clip was, it doesn't even fully capture um, the insanity of what occurred because as um, that encounter kind of carried out, uh, it was drawing a lot of attention to ourselves and where we were standing and basically um, all the transgender activists and all the pro-prostitution lobby people um, kind of started to hear what was going on and they surrounded us and we were outnumbered by about three to one. Um, we didn't catch every single person who screamed at us on camera. We had, you know, women just screaming at the top of their lungs right in our faces. We had someone throw a water bottle at us um, and one woman tell us that we deserve to be degraded. Um, and we were just being completely surrounded and attacked from all sides and the crowd grew very claustrophobic. Um, and it was a pretty intense situation to be in. I felt pretty physically intimidated by the um, man who was harassing us. Um, you know, had people, you know, waving their fingers in our faces and, you know, you saw in the video clip how he um, snatched my friend's phone. So it was just getting kind of scary. So we made sure to keep filming as much of it as we possibly could. With the presence of this bullshit behind me, how the fuck am I supposed to feel safe? Okay. 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 They get to stop go down. These signs need to go. You need to go. If that's what we're playing.
They don't give a fuck about money. They don't give a fuck about poor people. They don't give a fuck about queer people. They just want to show off their pussies. I don't give a fuck. You don't fucking know what a lesbian is. You don't fucking know what a fucking lesbian is. I bet your lady dick knows, right? You don't fucking know what it is. So I think um, as this was all kind of happening, some people must have gone off and started talking to some of the event organisers about what was going on. Um, And they had a very strange response to the conflict. Um, We were continually approached by people, you know, and asked to, you know, stop the conflict. And we were the ones who um, kept on being approached by organisers as though we were the ones driving what was happening when we were really just standing there and these people all kind of approached us. Um, And then after that, um, the organisers sent in these huge union guys, these guys from the CFMEU, um, sent about three of them in and they were instructed to use their flags to obstruct us and just, you know, get their bodies in there and just be big bulky guys just getting in the way. Um, And it was kind of meant to be in the interests of both sides' safety, but um, we could hear them kind of laughing at us and agreeing with the other side. So it actually made us feel a lot more physically intimidated because not only were we being harassed by these activists, but we had these, you know, huge bulky dudes, you know, right up in our space. Um, Just all happening on International Women's Day, which I just cannot believe the irony. Um, And I think we caught a little bit of that flag waving at least in this next clip. My apologies, I accidentally covered the mic here. Um, the audio will be back shortly, but basically um, she's just arguing here that saying that women have vaginas isn't saying that women are vaginas. Um, and then I think the pink and green haired woman starts arguing about trans murder statistics and um, another woman points out that trans women are murdered at such high rates typically because they're black um, and then the audio should come back now. Yes, black men are also killed, but so are trans women. Why, why, why are you just saying other statistics? I'm sorry, but men, straight men don't know shit about your What would you do if someone was holding a sign that says, hey, you know it doesn't say we would ask them to leave. It doesn't say it to a minority. It doesn't say anything about hate. It's just saying that they're not. Right now. 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 surgeries that they perform on transgender people like it's the same no it's not it's, the same, it's the same abuse of human also, rights then why are they trying to trans children who can't consent what these why are the babies tra- yeah, yeah. yeah and the trans activists are trying to make seven year old children the reason why they do that to babies is because they don't feel comfortable not having them in the neat two categories exactly why do trans activists do it when there are trans children i'm not talking about trans activists i'm saying what you're no, saying, saying that they're, they're doing, doing the same thing, thing. Doing the same it's incorrect because they're fucking people 
forcing them into those two categories. That's how trans surgery was invented. Those forced into sex surgeries, that's where it came from. Sexologists like... like, it's not. Yeah, it is. Look it up. Fucking idiot. So all of the footage you've just seen occurred at the very beginning of the march um, when the crowd of people was just stationary outside the state library where the march began, just listening to the speeches. Um, And by the time the march actually left, um, we were so exhausted from, you know, the craziness that you've just seen that um, only four of us actually went on the march and the rest of us just stayed behind um, where we were to kind of just you know, take some deep breaths, kind of debrief about what just happened um, and have a good, you know, good laugh at what we had just seen. It's also worth noting that um, just like last year, we weren't left alone even as we tried to kind of break away from the march. As we were sitting here, um, we noticed a trans activist kind of hovering around us, um, just sitting nearby, just keeping an eye on us. Um, we tried to take some group photos together and we had, you know, people trying to photo bomb us and it was just you know why are you so obsessed with us like it was just ridiculous um and then just as last year there was a bit of online aftermath to look at after the march as well so I'm going to present these screen caps kind of neutrally um because you know I've described what's been happening you've seen the footage I'll let you come to your own conclusions about whether these are accurate appraisals of the events um so This tweet says, sex workers, trans and GNB folk were largely excluded from IWD 2018 in NAM, so-called Melbourne, and had to deal with swerfs and turfs at the rally. A group had to forcibly take the platform to advocate for their rights. Trans women and sex workers seized the platform at the Melbourne IWD 2018 rally after being aggressively harassed by swerf and turfs. It was truly breathtaking. Hashtag sex work is work. Hashtag trans women are women. Hashtag solidarity. A bunch of trans women and sex workers stormed the stage at the, at the International Women's Day March in Melbourne this afternoon. We did it to protest the harassment of our communities by radical feminists. We did it because we were actively unsupported and obstructed by the organisers when we asked for a platform, so we took it. And then also following the march in the event, um, I think some women from our group were trying to post in the event to kind of um, posting the links to the videos and try to draw awareness towards, you know, what's going on and, you know, the failures of the organisers to protect us from this harassment. Um, And they deleted everything and then they posted this and said that um, they've deleted an active thread as there were threats of violence and other abuse and antagonism throughout. So I think this post-march reaction and even the things that we experienced on the march can be perfectly described with this concept of the cry bully. Um, I'll link to this article in the description because it's so relevant to the situation and I'll read you a couple of little excerpts. So, Jeremy Clarkson is a prime cry bully, punching a producer and then whining in the Sunday Times about losing my baby, the baby being Top Gear. Perez Hilton, recently of the CBB house, is a good example too screaming abuse at his wretched roommates until they snapped and hit back, at which point he would dissolve in floods of tears and flee to the diary room to claim that he felt unsafe. And another um, excerpt of the article says, The transsexual and pimp lobbies bring classic cry-bully tactics into play whenever they come across someone who doesn't, shock horror, think the same as them, as unashamed feminists from the activist Julie Bindle to the comedian Kate Smirthwaite have discovered. In these cases, the claim that safe spaces might be violated by the presence of someone who thinks differently to them, but born women, mysteriously, are expected to surrender the ultimate safe space, the female toilets, to pre-op chicks with dicks if they are not to be accused of violent bigotry. So I think that's probably enough hate speech and thought crime for one video, so I'm going to wrap it up there. Um, But I would really encourage anyone who watched this video and thinks, you know, what's happening here is wrong, Whether you're a radical feminist or not, um, this issue represents an attack on our right to freedom of speech and freedom of assembly, and that affects anyone with any opinions. So I would really encourage you to share this video around, um, talk to people about it, talk to people about this issue of censorship on the left. Um, And I'm also anticipating this video being mass reported and taken down, so if you could download it and repost it, on any platform that you possibly can. That would also be a big help for me. Um, 
And I just want to end this video with a call to action to radical feminists in particular um, to start standing up for ourselves against these bullies um, because it's been going on for too long and it's, you know, it's getting really severe and ridiculous. Like we have things happening like 60 year old women being, you know, pushed to the ground and strangled for being radical feminists. That's something that happened in um, Speaker's Corner in the UK. So please um, like, comment and subscribe and all that good stuff. Um, and I do intend on making some more videos about some of the topics that I've touched on in this video. Um, I'll probably make a follow up video about the media response to this event because I've already seen some interesting coverage that's just popped up today. So do stay tuned for that. Um, and thank you so much for watching.